This is God's Word. I didn't come up with spankings. And the Bible says, do not spare the rod or spoil the child. Hey, praise God, praise God, praise God. Gwen Chamberlain developed a following of thousands with a Christian diet plan she called the Way Down Workshop. Through obedience and faith. No. That message led to the formation of her own religious movement, the Remnant Fellowship. It's the movement that demands strict obedience even from its children. If you want to go back to my, my teachings, which is what this is founded on, like I would say, I would like have to snap my finger and they would, they would want to obey. For wisdom is more precious. But now the apparent child abuse death of this young Atlanta area boy has investigators questioning the Remnant Fellowship's teachings. I'm not going to hide behind the fact that our good Lord says, do not spare the rod. Remnant leader Ted Anger. As far as a, a pat on the bottom, as a last resort, and it's always in love. But two of Remnant's members, Joseph and Sonia Smith, now sit in jail charged with killing their eight-year-old son, Joseph. Investigators wrote that the child had extensive bruising over his entire body. But the parents showed no remorse. They felt it was just a part of discipline and were very defensive about their religion. Does Remnant advocate repeated spankings of children over and over and over? No, sir. Absolutely not. No, sir. Absolutely no. not. No. Two or three spankings would not be enough. I mean, it could be 10 spankings. Former Remnant members Terry and David Phillips say Shamblin not only encouraged spankings, but stressed they must be severe. That you had to make the spanking count. If they're not scared of a spanking, he didn't spank them. If you haven't really spanked them yet, you don't love them. You love yourself. They had to, to feel the pain and that they were, that they were being disobedient. Then during one service when their daughter misbehaved, Terry Phillips says another remnant member pressured her to apply Shamblin's teachings. Kept on for about an hour and it was just spanking and then trying to see if she'd stop crying and then she didn't stop crying. You know, this person was telling me to spank her harder. Would it ever be appropriate to spank a two-year-old over and over and over and over and over and over in one night? I, n n that's not what we teach here, Phil. A year ago, our two-and-a-half-year-old Avery, we had a real showdown with her. But in this conference call with Remnant Women, another Remnant leader, David Martin, holds out his own showdown spanking with his daughter as an example. And we had a, 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 a leg spanking over and over and over and over and over and over again. And, uh, time one evening. Okay, you're listening. Okay, well then you know you need to talk to David Martin about that then because that's and, not. And, and you agree that was the perfect way to handle a child. David Martin had a real showdown. It was a one night showdown, and that child never forgot it. But are you asking? Does that go on very often? Are you kidding? No, Absolutely. it does not. It is so rare. And it is only strong-willed children. And the love that I have for my family. In fact, Joseph Smith told investigators that he dealt with his own strong-willed child by spanking him with glue sticks. Former Remnant recruit Adam Brooks. Glue sticks are actually, you know, sort of common within the Remnant Fellowship culture to be used to, dis to physically dim discipline children. It was a suggestion that Terry Phillips says she heard from one of her Remnant sisters. And I said, why? And she said, well, because they hurt like switches. They're, they're, it really hurts, but it doesn't make marks on, it, on your children. Tell me about the use of glue sticks to spank children. It was not from here. It came no. from a member somewhere, someplace else, because they're, uh, they're, uh, they're, and, then, and, it, and it went around. Shemblet tells her followers not to worry about their children's self-esteem. Instead, worry about what she calls their God-esteem. In the case of young Joseph, investigators say that meant his parents repeatedly locked him up in a small room with just his Bible. Does Remnant advocate locking children up for lengthy periods no, of time? No, no. Not, we don't advocate locking them up for any period of time. Absolutely no. not. I have a tape of a telephone call between you and Sonia Smith. Uh, this is Sonia Smith in Atlanta. Sonia! I got to speak with Ted Anker. That's you. That's me. I did exactly what Ted told me to do take everything out of his room. We got everything out of there and locked him in there from that Friday until Monday and only left him in the room with his Bible. That tape has yeah. been made or tampered 
or whatever. I d totally deny that, is that, absolutely that has untrue. ever been said by anyone. And that's a miracle. You've got a child that's going from just bizarre down to in control. So I'll praise God. And you had a chance to tell her that was not correct. That was not on there. Instead, you said, praise the Lord. No, that was not on there. We are spoiling these kids. We are, you know, ruining their lives by even letting them think about themselves at all. So thank you, Sonia, for sharing that. I definitely believe that Remnant has created a culture in which people on the fringe might be more likely to do this sort of thing. Do you think it's possible that you have inadvertently encouraged child abuse? No. no. Absolutely no, not. no. You can have peace in the entire family. Shamblin says everywhere she looks, she sees lives that have been changed by her teachings. But critics say she ought to take another look into the face of this child of God. Do you fear for other remnant children? Yes, I do. Phil Williams, News Channel 5. Reading his Bible for a TV crew, eight-year-old Joseph Smith was the very model of obedience. Well, give me a second to get the fries on the table. But the Smiths were a family in crisis as the mother, Sonia, confided in a conference call with the women of her church. He was very destructive. Anything of mine he was trying to destroy. Uh, he strangled one of my babies. Uh, well, attempted to, he tried to set the house on fire. Evil behavior. In fact, investigators say this innocent looking child called himself legion, a term that means many devils. It was a term familiar within their church, the Remnant Fellowship. This, this family came to us for counsel. The child was wild. And so, you know, Phil, we help a lot of people every day. We're gonna get in trouble for it, Phil. We're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> But now his parents, Joseph and Sonia Smith, are charged with beating him to death. Investigators say they had turned to the Remnant Fellowship with its message of strict discipline instead of seeking professional help. It seems to be thought by Remnant Fellowship leadership that these are, these mental illnesses are more sort of fabrications of a, of a poor spiritual life where you're not in obedience to God. It's been a life-changing message for me. Former Remnant recruit Adam Brooks notes that in Remnant's own videos, and I've laid down anger and depression and pornography. Depression and antidepressants are equated with sin. Hi, I'm Terry Phillips. One of those testimonies came from Terry Phillips, who had been told by doctors that she had a chemical imbalance and needed medication. Her husband, David. When I dealt with the leaders, they were all saying, Listen, she doesn't need to be on these. We don't sit there and tell someone this is what you have to do. What Here, Remnant founder like, Gwen Shamblin tells us she does not tell her followers to give up their medication. But here in this internet webcast. Uh, and how would you like to find out that all of us were on Prozac? Then why in the world are you even beginning to think that's okay for you? It's not the drug. That's the problem. It's the heart of man. It's when we over medicate ourselves. Um, it seems like I talk too fast because I'm so excited about God. So I will Terry Phillips says she was fine at first because of the lingering effects of the medication and her spiritual high. Then she began spinning out of control and realized she needed her medicine. And I was sneaking behind their backs taking it because I was desperate for my life. I wanted to feel better again. I, I was, was thinking about suicide. Anyone that wants to stand up again and say, get off Prozac? Ted Anger, get on up here. Soon remnant leaders found out. Two of the men leaders actually said, you get that medicine from her and you flush it. You flush it down the toilet. Did remnant leadership ever encourage her husband to take her medicine away from her? Uh, yes. But Shamblin and remnant leader Ted Anger say they were only responding to the Phillips cries for help. That was the, uh, that was the advice given, sure. Oh, the advice given knowing what they wanted they feel. I pray for strength in dealing with Phillips says her journal shows her turmoil, but remnant leaders were not sympathetic about her depression. There is nothing to be concerned about. What's the worst thing that happened? You die? So what? You go to heaven. I was also feeling very guilty because I thought God hated me because I couldn't be strong enough. I couldn't pray enough. I couldn't, you know, knock the demons out of my mind enough. I mean, she was just going overboard. I mean, just down on her face praying, oh God, just relieve me of this pain that I'm in. Finally, Terry says she was near suicide. I left church one Sunday and nobody had compassion for me, not one bit. They told me to stop crying, to, to just not feel sorry for myself. And uh, I ran to an ER and they admitted me. Some of these 
cases have resulted in hospitalizations, which is not in the remnant brochure, I can assure you. And look at the results, Phil. Person after person coming off, person after person being set free. Today, the Phillips say their Christian doctor finally convinced them her problem was medical, not spiritual. He kind of informed me that, you know, there are true chemical imbalances. You know, this is, uh, uh, and it's not a sin, you know, like Remnant says it is. Remnant's critics say they fear most for those children that may desperately need professional help. In a situation where physical discipline is the primary tool for getting kids in line, I worry a lot about that. Phil Williams, News Channel 5. You never heard any documentation of any Israelite man ever not re recognizing a female prophet. In the Bible, there are the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Malachi. In Remnant Fellowship, there's Gwen Shamblin. She seems to be considered a prophet by all members of Remnant Fellowship. Which is why former Remnant recruit Adam Brooks believes members like this Atlanta area couple now charged with beating their son to death are willing to yield to Shamblin's judgment on the use of severe discipline for children. If Gwen speaks about parenting, you can bet that people are going to listen, they're going to take her advice, and they're going to follow it. Are you a prophet? I don't believe I know what my gift name is. So I, I will tell you, I'm still wrestling with that. I've been told that for years. In fact, videos from Shamblin's way down Christian diet plan strike an Exodus theme, and she finds reassurance in her own PR. Even in the Atlanta Constitution years ago, they likened me into, to like a, a present day Moses to a certain extent, because it was breaking people out of the slavery of overeating. And on September 11th, Shemblin quickly sent out an email to her followers comparing herself to the Old Testament prophets and saying she had been trying to warn America. Working on my PhD. Adam Brooks lived in New York and was being recruited to join Shemblin's church. She was kind of saying, you don't have a lot of time to make a decision. And uh, a smart person would, would decide in, in my favor and get underneath uh, the authority of Remnant Fellowship because that's the only thing that's going to protect you. Former members say there was something exhilarating about Remnant's claims to be a group of believers who are becoming completely obedient to God. They always said this is the true church. You know, there's no other church. Every, every other church out there is counterfeit. So this is drilled in your head, you know, week after week after week. Members are encouraged to listen to Christian music by Shamblin's son, Michael, but avoid other Christian artists who might present counterfeit messages. And Shamblin tells her followers that she has the authority to tell them what's right and what's wrong. I have am not, not been put in this position because I'm going to put up with you all's disobedience. If I hear of it, then I will correct it. If I come, if I have to come to you, then you're really in trouble. It was storming, it was God's judgment, we might not live through the night. She used a lot of fear. And then if the storm was over, then she'd say, oh, God's so good, he actually let us just to live another night. Remnant's church services have even drawn protests from parents who say Shemblin encouraged her followers to cut off contact with their non-Remnant families. I don't, I don't understand why mom's out here picketing my church. Both of y'all are so brainwashed that y'all don't even know. One of those parents, Pamela Carney, blames Shamblin personally. It's all about being here under Gwen's control. She wants to control everybody. I do believe we are onto things. I believe God's making public what we're doing. Shamblin says the questions about the apparent child abuse death of a young remnant child is just God's way of getting out word about what she calls the New Jerusalem. As to what is the truth about remnant fellowship, so you think if you lie for God's sake, it's okay? I believe that if God calls you to, that you had better protect Jerusalem. There's so many cases in here where uh, people did that very thing to protect Jerusalem, and so they were rewarded. Yeah.